The Doobie Brothers and Long Train Running on Radio 2. It's Matthew Bannister sitting in for Jeremy Vine this lunchtime and for the rest of the week. Six minutes past midday, and it is fair to say that the banks have come in for their fair share of criticism in the last few months for landing us in the current economic crisis. But should they shoulder all of the blame? Or is there another guilty party here? The media. Did journalists ignore what the banks were doing when they were supposed to be our eyes and ears in the city? And did their reporting help to drive us into recession? On the other hand, we are in the middle of a global recession and we did nearly face an unprecedented meltdown of the world's banking system. Shouldn't the media be talking about it? Mind you, by saying what I just said, am I guilty of talking the country into a deeper recession myself? Difficult to work out. Well, today, MPs from the Treasury Select Committee are grilling journalists on their actions before and after the crisis came to light. And one of those journalists joins us now. Alex Brummer is city editor for the Daily Mail. Um, Alex, do you accept any blame for the depth of the recession? Well, I think we can't accept blame for the depth of the recession. I think if we do share some blame, it's probably that we didn't issue our warnings early enough. Um, Oddly enough, um, I can claim innocence in this, and I'm sure that my colleagues who appear before the Treasury Select Committee will say the same, because I was warning as early as 2002-2003 that there were problems at Northern Rock, which was the first bank to run into trouble, and that we were in the middle of a credit bubble. Um, But I probably didn't warn loudly enough, and many of my colleagues didn't probably shout loudly enough. And so we were not heard, and we allowed this thing to grow and didn't put the brakes on. But um, actually, it wasn't our fault, and we just didn't shout loudly enough. And you were in good company there, because the regulators didn't seem to be shouting that loudly either. Well, they're paid to do it. Um, We're paid to report what's actually going on, and we respond to economic data and economic statistics as they come out. And what those statistics showed was, of course, that um, the economy was still healthy and still growing at a great pace. And indeed, um, um, successive chancellors in their budget forecasts um, also said the same thing. They were very bullish about the economic outlook. And so it was very hard to swim against that tide. Now, let's bring in Jonathan Davis, who's a chartered financial planner at Armstrong Davis. Jonathan, do you think the media should shoulder some blame for the depth of the recession? I think they should. Um, I'm sure um, Alex himself is is innocent and I'm sure each one of them would be uh, right put in front of the MPs and they'd all plead innocence. But, you know, his own paper, all the papers, all the TV stations, all the radio stations were pumping up property, borrow and well, spend. Well, I'm sorry, I reject that totally. Our paper in particular, and I'm not, we're not alone, the Telegraph, other newspapers are exactly the same. We were all warning. Um, there were warnings out there about property crashes coming, that prices were 20, 30% overvalued. We were writing those stories. In fact, we were being criticised for writing stories which were negative when, the, when other people were being positive. So I think uh, you've got that wrong. And Jonathan, just to be fair to Alex, um, the Daily Mail is satirised by magazines like Private Eye for always warning that house prices are Going to crash. Um, t- truly incredible. Um, the the mail um, was right at the forefront of saying you've got to buy property. If never, you don't, we've never can ever I please said speak, that, Mr. Brummer. Well, we've never said that. I mean, you're talking absolute garbage. You produced a headline which says that. Well, obviously, I can't write, do right now. But, well, because you uh, haven't got the evidence. The, 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 talk- the, the, mail, the mails reader, the mails readers. Um, look, I don't want to focus on the mail in particular. Okay. Well, I'm, let's, I'm, let's, 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 say, Alex, let's this, just leave the mail to one side. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, if you've got a more generic criticism of what happened in the media, can you make that? The economists and the business correspondents, and indeed, Alex, you, you've pretty well said it, you missed the point entirely. Um, you, you said we, we were growing and everything was all honky-dory and the chancellor after chancellor was saying everything was OK. Do you know what? Of course they did. Of course they would. That's what they do. They say everything's OK when, in fact, we're about to um, hit a wall at 70 miles an hour. The amount of debt in society was going crazy. Um, the property porn, as it's been called on the television, wall-to-wall, peak-time viewing, buy property, get into debt, spend, 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 be a shopaholic, get some retail therapy. Well, you know, this was not prudent. Even in the last few years, up to the uh, when the crash started up to Northern Rock, it was imprudent. The fact, for example, that the economy kept going and house prices kept rising just means, unfortunately, that the bust is even bigger. OK. Now, Alex, can I just look at the other side well, of the yes, coin? Can I just pick up another, an- another point which I know will be raised by some listeners to this programme, which is that uh, once the signs that there is a problem occur, that the media has a kind of feeding frenzy and talks the economy down using words like crisis, uh, prices plummeting, you know, these kind of very pejorative words. That's 
the other criticism that is often made, that the media, once it sees a little problem, you know, kind of worries away at the wound and makes things worse. What well, do you say to that? Well, I say, firstly, it's not a little problem. It's an enormous problem. Every country in the world is facing recession at the moment. Um, output in Japan, for instance, has fallen 9% two months in a row. So this is a global international disaster of mammoth proportions. Um, it wasn't me who said this, but um, I think one of the, um, the deputy governors of the Bank of England said this was um, perhaps the worst economic crisis in human history. I didn't say that. He said it. Um, the IMF has said it's the worst crisis since the 1930s. Should we ignore that? Should we hide the truth from investors, from depositors, from people whose money is at risk? Um, of course not. You shouldn't shoot the messenger. We are there to convey that information in a fair and analytical way. And, of course, if you added up some of those headlines, you might have got people more worried than they ought to have been. But everyone should be cautious in these circumstances. It's only right mm. that they do so. And just to go back to the previous point, I reject entirely the idea that we were not aware that the debt bubble was break- going up and that we were taking what chancellors said. Um, we always talk for a long period about rose-tinted spectacles and the spectre of government debt building in a very bad way during the boom years when it should have been being reduced. And that's something which has been a a permanent feature of many of the city pages, certainly, and the financial pages of the newspapers. Jonathan, isn't the issue that the politicians got it wrong and that the newspapers were simply reporting what the politicians said? So your accusation that, um, you know, everybody was encouraged to get into debt was encouraged by the politicians. And then similarly, when the Chancellor came out and said, you know, it's a terrible situation, you know, there was a great chorus of media around that too. Absolutely. Um, it, it is amazing. Um, I think essentially what happened was that the, the press and the broadcast media um, didn't want to upset their audience, their readers, their bosses, the government. And, of course, let's face it, here I am at the BBC. The, the government pays for the BBC. Um, the British public pay for the BBC. Well, I couldn't agree more. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't always look that way. Um, yes, I mean, B- B- Brown said no more boom and bust. So what did everyone write? No more boom and bust. Brown, um, Brown, they Brown, it, but they, can I can I, I just I'm sorry, please? they, they wrote Brown, no more Brown boom and bust, but in a um, sceptical I, I, way. I, I, I have, I have uh, I will, in 1997, I will not allow another house price bubble to occur. Well, of course, a house price bubble did occur. But, you know, as late as a few months ago, um, I, I was indeed on with you, man, uh, Matthew, and, and, and people um, phoned in and, and said, I, I was talking nonsense that there's going to be, there's a recession, that there are great problems out there. Even as late as a few months ago, because for every... Um, a bear, um, in other words, an economist who was talking, uh, who's saying that the economy was in trouble, there were 20 bulls. We were drowned out. No one listened to us. Mm. But let's, let's be clear, Jonathan, there is an economic problem going on, Massive. which is huge, which was not caused by the media. Oh, The uh, media did wasn't. not make this pro- problem occur. Uh, the, the banks caused this the, problem, the, didn't the, they? The, the, the media as it happens, did not create the bubble. The banks, the people, the government created the bubble. But, you know, let's be fair, the media didn't exactly help to calm things down. And in the bust, the banks created the bust and therefore the government and the people, ultimately, the press as ever, are simply reporting what is going on. Mm. I think they could have taken a more active role in the lead-up, however. Well, that, that's where we came in, really, Alex, isn't it? it and is. That, and that, think, that is I the point that you're, you're accepting. I accept that point, that um, perhaps um, financial journalists were not as alert um, as they ought to have been to what was going on. Um, it's very difficult, this question, because, of course, we all want to claim innocence. Um, mm. We all want to su- suggest that we were prophets and we saw what was coming. Some of us did, um, but we perhaps didn't do so loudly enough. We didn't get the projection we should have demanded in our papers and um, and in the media across the media generally and so indeed I think that you know that could be a, that is a fair accusation that we didn't sound the alarm bells early enough and I think that is where the truth is what I will not accept um, is the idea that somehow we are responsible for what has happened and and that's a uh, that's a, a theme which has come through quite strongly in recent months. I've I've spoken to a number of audiences. In fact, I've written, written a book about the credit crunch. And when I've been introducing that book, I've often had that question, aren't you the media to blame? And, of course, I, I, I won't accept that that is a fair criticism. OK, Alex, thanks very much for joining us. Alex Brummer, City Editor for the Daily Mail. And thanks to Jonathan Davis, too, from Armstrong Davis. Uh, your turn to comment now, 0500 288 291 or vine at bbc.co.uk. Are the media in some way to blame for our economic woes.
do it.